It's the same procedure as last year, it's the same procedure as every year, and I'm really happy to have him here this year after such a good election period, and I think he must be really thrilled, and we're really happy to have him here um, on stage, the first speaker of the day. He is the State Minister, Ministry of Economics, Energy, Transportation and Regional Development of the State of Hesse. Um, please give a warm welcome to Tarek Al-Wazir. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. It seems a little bit too early for the Pinter community, um, but maybe we can uh, wake you up. Uh, and uh, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you for the invitation and the honor of opening Eurofinance Tech as part of the Eurofinance Week. And uh, it's uh, the fourth time in a row that I'm opening uh, this event. And I think this shows that the fintech topic uh, is no longer brushed aside as just another hype, but is really uh, becoming uh, something that uh, is a common thing uh, around uh, the financial system. And uh, if you look at the global investments in the fintech sector in the form of venture capital, of private equity and M&A, it continues to grow even early in the morning. Um, according to the KPMG survey, Pulse of Fintech 2018, global investments in the sector amounted to 31.7 billion US dollar in the second quarter of 2018 alone. That's nearly the entire volume recorded in the whole of last year. And what we see is that following major banks and institutional investors, medium-sized banks have been jumping onto the bandwagon and are now increasingly investing in fintech developments, participating in accelerator programs or founding incubators. And this trend is also set to prevail in Germany. According to EY, the total value of investment in startups was in Germany, was down by 7% in the first half of 2018 compared to last year's record high. However, investments in the fintech sector carried on climbing from 330 to 400 million euros. And fintech is the second most important segment for startup investment capital after e-commerce. In last year's opening speech, I primarily addressed the opportunities and risks associated with fintech developments. And looking back, it's quite obvious that the specter of a major disruption of the financial and insurance industry has up to now failed to materialize. What is more, we are noting a growing number of strong cooperations between established companies and fintech and insurtech startups. Fintechs are incre increasingly turning into service providers for banks. And banks are focusing more and more on customer-oriented white labeling solutions as well as on product partnerships. Surveys conducted on both sides show that these corporations are definitely not one-way streets. While 60% of banks are very satisfied and a further 33% are partly satisfied with their fintech collaborations, 100% of fintechs are very or partly satisfied with their bank corporations. Um, that shows that we are somehow having a kind of a symbiotic relationship, and I think that this is the right way to go. It brings together the individual strengths, strengths of both sides and offers great advantages for all parties involved by reducing costs, enhancing customer loyalty, increasing revenues, and providing regulatory security. So that means that cooperation instead of cannibalization seems to be the guiding principle for the financial industry's successful future. 
I think the same applies to the competition between fintech locations within Germany or even across Europe. From an economic policy perspective, European fintech solutions and financial marketplaces will have to concentrate on catching up with internationally leading competitors in the next years. And for this purpose, an even larger number of innovative and attractive solutions will have to be developed, in particular for clients on an international level. After all, the so-called big tech companies from the US or China, who are perfectly capable of offering financial and fintech services on a large scale in Germany, are still sleeping giants. We must therefore make it our common goal to pave the way and create optimal framework conditions for a founder and innovation friendly environment on the one hand, whilst on the other, and this is just as important, thoroughly exploiting the opportunities arising. I'm convinced that as a business location, this local region and Germany as a whole can successfully take the next step. It's no coincident, coincidence that in the World Economic Forum's recently published Global Competitiveness Report, Germany is rated the world's leading country when it comes to innovation. And concerning the Frankfurt Rhein-Main region, many important decisions have been made here at the Frankfurt Financial Marketplace in the course of paving the way, the way towards optimal startup conditions over the last few years. Uh, you know Tech Quartier, TQ, Frankfurt's innovation hub and central point of contact for national and international startups will soon be celebrating its second birthday. Today, 15 of the most important financial service providers and consulting firms, 120 startups and the region's leading universities are amongst the partners of TQ. Numerous other initiatives, events, programs and incubators at the financial marketplace offer diverse and attractive products and solutions for fintechs. And despite the good progress made in Frankfurt, we know that the founder ecosystem is still in its early stage of development. And if you look at the master plan for Frankfurt Rhein-Main as a startup region, containing a comprehensive concept, including measures to be introduced, was presented in February of this year with the aim of achieving a truly ambitious goal by 2022. Nothing less than the transformation of the Frankfurt Rhein-Main region into an internationally recognized tech region and leading fintech hub in Central Europe within five years. We have made it our task to improve conditions here for all aspects of the startup ecosystem, from developing and fostering new talent to improving networks cooperations and financing through to marketing the region's activities. Since the publication of the master plan, Tech Quartier and its partners have succeeded in getting various measures off the ground. I would especially like to highlight the successful establishment of Tech Quartier's and plug and place joint flagship accelerator, which addresses advanced fintechs worldwide. The Tech Observer website serves as a central online platform for the region's fintech and startup economy. And uh, appointing Startup Genome to prepare the Frankfurt Startup Ecosystem Report was also crucial. This report is the first comprehensive analysis focusing on young, fast growing, innovative, and technology oriented companies, so called scale ups in the region. The report clearly shows that the region is on the right track with the measures it has introduced and that the situation is much better than recently portrayed in the media. Uh, when it comes to looking at indicators, indicators such as available early stage funding per startup, cooperation within the community and international networking, the Frankfurt Rhein-Main region belongs to the top locations worldwide and according, according to the report also has the highest density of fintech startups worldwide. Thus, Frankfurt creates a microcosm of success with the potential to accelerate the growth of, of scale-ups. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, to get today's agenda proves that we set the right priorities with our activities around the topics of fintech, blockchain, and big data in Frankfurt. I trust you'll find this event inspiring, and I hope you enjoy a fruitful exchange of views. Thank you for your attentions, and have a successful day.